Um, all right, we'll, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about the success um, as we go along. Winston, just, um, I mean, obviously Guyana went uh, through some rocky and turbulent times um, in the 60s, 70s and 80s. How important was cricket in, uh, for, for the Guyanese here, given, given the tough times that they were going through? Cricket's up as ours, our national game. I mean, since the beginning of the 20th century, they want to keep horse racing. And we never did well at any other sport internationally, even sometimes regionally, in football, table <coughs> tennis. We didn't do all that well. So where games were concerned, cricket was our game. And I think from, from the early 60s, with the emergence of, well, the full bloom of Kanai and Butcher, Solomon Landscapes, when West Indies began, became world champions in the early 60s for the very first time, uh, we were very, very proud. And at the same time, we became independent. A number of things coalesced to give us a lot of faith in our cricket team and admiration for it. But there's no other sport we, we did well in. So cricket was the, the thing. Have you sensed in the last few years, as the team has done less well, have you sensed a, a waning of enthusiasm? I mean, I see we've got lots of young cricketers from the cricket clubs. We've got some from GCC, Demerara, Everest, is it? Any more? Anyway, we've got lots of young cricketers here yeah. tonight. There's obviously a great enthusiasm still for the game, but have you sensed it waning over the last 15 years since the team have not been doing so well? In a sense in that we don't have cricketers who are really, what do you call a cricket role model? I mean, we've only had two world-class players, well, as I nearly said one and a half, <laughs> John DePaul and Sawan. Sawan's career hasn't been as... No, Hooper? Uh, if you're taking everything together, yes, but if you're talking about test cricket alone and talking about his potential, I mean, I'm a Hooper fan. I think a lot of us are disappointed that he didn't do as well as he should. He had far more ability than his results showed. But if you put together, you know, he's one day limited over, he's a phenomenal limited over prey and so on, he passes out. I mean, he's been very maligned. And some of us, I malign him too, but he's one of my favorites. But we don't really have people you can look up to these days in cricket. I think we'd be disappointed. I mean, some of us, uh, well, I hope they're not here. Uh, some of us hoping that people like Fuda Din, Dion Ryan in particular, when he was 16, you know, I really felt he would be another Chandapal. I mean, Chandapal has done very well. But we don't have the kind of... And Chandapal is not an exciting cricketer. He wouldn't evoke the kind of response Clive and Kanai and the other people did. So I think we're lacking, really, in terms of successful cricketers. And we hope that something will change. But we're concerned because, the, historically, it was Guyan and Barbados that really constituted the strength of West Indian cricket. Things change because we are, and we become a, a bigger territory in terms of more and more uh, islands, more and more nations contributing to the team. But West Indian cricket has never done well without the Guyanese and the Barbadian input. I'm talking about the last so year. In England, we have a saying that when Yorkshire are strong, England are strong. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the West Indian equivalent is when Guyana are strong, West Indies are strong. Is Historically, that right? Historically, that has been the case. But that can always change, right? And we hope it does not be the case because I don't see too much coming with Guyanese concern. I don't know where it's coming from anywhere in the region to tell the truth, but Guyana and Barbies have been doing all the well in recent years, even in the regional competitions.